All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the continuation of your BSCE1 review. Let's have a recap from last week. Okay, let's do post MI complications. The first one, what is the major cause of death in post MI? Arrhythmia. Arrhythmia, specifically what kind of arrhythmia? Ventricular. Ventricular what? VTAC or VFib? VTAC. Careful, VFib, okay? Major cause of death, arrhythmias, VFib. Next, there's a new systolic murmur, five to seven days, status post MI. What, what happened to this patient? Papillary muscle rupture. Excellent, papillary muscle rupture. There's a acute severe hypotension. Okay, there's no murmur, there's hypotension. Acute, severe hypotension. What's happening here? A cardiac tamponade because you ruptured the wall. Excellent. So ventricular free wall rupture, okay? Next, step up in oxygen concentration from the right atrium to the right ventricle. What is happening here? There's an increase in oxygen concentration from the right atrium to the right ventricle. Intraventricular septal rupture. Excellent. Ventricular septal rupture. Okay. Next, persistent stem ST elevation at least one month later, and there's a systolic mitral regurge murmur. What's happening here? We have persistent ST elevation a month later, the MI, plus you have a mitral regurge murmur. What's happening here? Insufficient. What's happening? It starts with A. There is a blood between tunica media and tunica aneurysm. Excellent. Ventricular wall aneurysm for this one. Next, Canon A waves. Canon A waves. What's happening here? Is that ventricular tachycardia? Um, careful for this one. So you have an atrioventricular dissociation. So it could either be um, two kinds of things, V-fib, ventricular fibrillation, or a third degree heart block, right? AV dissociation, think third degree heart block. Next, five to 10 weeks later, pleuritic chest pain and low grade temperature. What are we thinking here? Five to 10 weeks. Dressler syndrome. Excellent, Dressler syndrome or you could have autoimmune pericarditis, high yield. What's the treatment for Dressler syndrome? Simple. NSAIDs. NSAIDs and aspirin, okay? Excellent, guys. Next, young healthy patient comes in with chest pain, worse with inspiration, better with leaning forwards. You have friction rub and you have a diffuse ST elevation. What am I describing here? Pericarditis. Pericarditis, excellent. So this is like, look at the EKG of your um, pericarditis. It's non-specific ST um, changes. What if the chest pain is worse with palpation? If you palpate the anterior chest wall, it's painful. Chest pain with palpation, what is this? Think of another differential. This is very memorable for me because I had this in Grenada. Postochondritis, okay? Postochondritis, worse with palpation. Another one, young healthy patient, chest pain, but with a history of viral infection and murmur. So the chest pain is very vague, right? But in the history of the, in the vignette, there's a history of viral infection, probably from Coxsackie virus, and there's my a new good job. There you go. That's the keyword, right? Proxyte, myocarditis. What if it occurs at rest? Worse at night, few CAD risk factors and migraine headaches with transient STEMI during episodes. Not STEMI, ST elevation. Is that Prince Metal? Excellent. Good job. Prince Metal angina. How are we going to diagnose? Ergonovin stimulation test. What's the treatment for Prince Metal? 
calcium channel blockers or nitrates. Now, I just want you to know the EKG buzzwords, right? Okay, progressive prolongation of the PR interval followed by a drop beat. What is this? Progressive prolongation of the PR interval until the beat is dropped. Type 1, Wenke backs. Right. Next, canon A wave in physical exam, regular PP interval and regular RR interval. This is your AV, atrioventricular dissociation. The third one, I, I don't think you know this one, but let's see. Varying PR interval with three or more morphologically distinct P waves in the same lead. Seen in an old person with chronic lung disease and pending respiratory failure. I think this is for step two. This is your multifocal atrial tachycardia. So there's three um, morphological P wave changes in every lead that you can have, commonly seen in COPD, okay? Multifocal atrial tachycardia. How do we diagnose this one? Morphologically different P wave changes in three leads commonly seen in COPD. Next, three or more consecutive beats with QRS of less than 120 and the rate of more than um, 120. What are we thinking here? Look at the um, look at the EKG. It's an SVT. It is um, supraventricular um, tachycardia. Excellent. Next, short PR interval followed by QRS of more than 120 with a slurred initial deflection representing early ventricular activation via the bundle of Kent. What is this? Wolf, Wolf Parkinson. Parkinson. Wolf Parkinson White. What's the treatment for Wolf Parkinson White? Type one A antiarrhythmics. Procainamide or quinine. Excellent. Procainamide. I yield. Regular rhythm with a ventricular rate of one twenty five and one fifty and an HL rate of two fifty to three hundred beats per minute. What is this? HL what? Look at the rate. It looks like flutter. Flutter. Excellent. HL flutter. Good. Next. Prolonged QT interval leading to undulating rotation. They love that word. Torso. Undulate. <laughs> what is it? Torso. 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 Right? So this is in the patient with, don't forget, low magnesium and low potassium. Okay? Or there is a lithium toxicity or a tricyclic antidepressants, right? Don't forget those um, associations. Next, regular rhythm with a rate between 150 to 220 beats per minute. There's a sudden onset of um, palpitations and dizziness. What are we, uh, what are we thinking here? Atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation. Excellent. Next, renal failure patient, burn victim with peak T waves, widen QRS, short QT, and there's a prolonged PR. Peak T waves, widen QRS, short QT, and prolonged. Um, hyperkalemia. Yes, you can. Yes, hyperkalemia. Basically, I think the last, the last one. Let's do this one. Alternate beat variation in direction. Well, that's not high yield because you have pulses paradoxus, hypotension, distant heart sounds. Well, you already diagnosed this one. Okay, do this. Pulses paradoxus, hypotension, distant heart sounds, and JVD. What is this? Look at the, even without looking at the EKG. What is this? Beck's triad. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> right? And then the last one is you have um, in hyper a hyperthyroid patient, old patient with um, shortness of breath, dizziness, palpitations with um, CHF or bulbs um, disorder. This is a fib. Look at look at here, undulating baseline, no P waves appreciated, ir irregular RR interval. So someone asked last week about EKG, all right? E um, imaging on the exam or EKG, it will only help you confirm your diagnosis. By reading in the vignette, by describing to you the patient, you already have a working diagnosis in your mind. And imaging is there just to help you confirm what's already in your mind as your diagnosis, okay? Don't be afraid about EKGs. Don't be afraid about imaging. 
because in the vignette, it's already describing you the patient. Okay, the imaging is there, the EKG is there for you to confirm your diagnosis. Next, let's do this murmur, buzzwords, high yield. Okay, what's this? Crescendo, decrescendo. Louder with squatting, softer with valsalva. You have pulsus parvus et tardus. Aortic stenosis. Excellent. Aortic stenosis. Next. Louder with valsalva. Softer with squatting or hand grip. Systolic ejection murmur. HCM. Valsalva. Decreased preload. So HOCM. Next. Late systolic murmur with click. What is this? There's a click. Mitrostenosis. Mitro. Mr. Stalin. Mitral prolapse. Excellent. MVP, right? This is your mitral valve prolapse. As long as you hear that late systolic murmur with click, or we call this one um, SE, SEC, um, systolic ejection click, think about mitral valve um, prolapse. Next, hollow systolic murmur radiating to the axilla with left atrial enlargement. Hollow mitral. systolic murmur. What is this? Mitral regurge. Excellent. Next. Hollow systolic murmur with late diastolic rumble in kids. Late diastolic rumble in kiddos. A hollow systolic murmur with late diastolic rumble in kiddos. Acyanotic. Mitral stenosis. Careful. A VSD. 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 Excellent. This is a hollow systolic, right? Murmur. Next, continuous machine like murmur. Machine like murmur. PDR. Patent ductus um, arteriosus. Um, what what infection in the mom? Diabetes. Or PDA? Rubella. Rubella. Right? Congenital um, rubella syndrome. To close the PDA. Endomethacin. Endomethacin. To open it. To keep it open. Prostaglandin E2, okay, to keep it um, open. What what nerve goes underneath the PDA or the ductus arteriosum, sorry, in an adult? What nerve? The laryngeal nerve. Which Recur one? Recurrent. Left. Left recurrent laryngeal nerve, a branch of what nerve? Cranial nerve what? Yes, 10, your vagus nerve, right? Your vagus nerve, your two branches left and right. Laryngeal nerve, the left goes underneath the ductus arteriosum, and then the right one goes underneath the, which one? The right one goes underneath the brachycephalic um, vein, okay? Don't forget that anatomy, wide, Fixed and split S2. So the dub is split. It's a wide and it's fixed. ASD. ASD. Good job. Don't forget VSD is holosystolic murmur, right? ASD is split S2. The dub sound is split. Next, rumbling diastolic with an opening snap. You know this one already. What is this? Left atrial in, uh, enlargement and AFib. Opening snap. Opening snap. What is this? Mitral stenosis. Mitral stenosis. Good job. Next. Blowing diastolic murmur with widened pulse pressure and eponym parade. A widened pulse pressure. That's the key thing here. Aortic regurgitation. Excellent. Aortic regurgitation. What's an eponym parade? Oh, can someone check that? What's an eponym parade? What is that? It's a collapsing pulse, actually. It's a water hammer pulse. You know water hammer? Search a picture of a water hammer. Okay, well, thank you. Sorry about that. No, no worries about it. This is a Corrigan sign, actually. Eponym sound. You know the water hammer? Um, 
it's a toy by kids, right? We describe it as a water hammer pulse. OK, next. OK, you need to know chest X-ray um, buzzwords. Right, so opacification, consolidation, and air bronchograms. What are we looking here? Opacification, consolidation, air um, bronchograms. Lower pneumonia. Probably, yes, lower pneumonia. Next, hyperlucent lung fields with flattened diaphragm. Emphysema. Emphysema, good job. Heart, more than 50%. AP, AP is a diameter, anterior posterior diameter. You have cephalization, you have curly B lines, and interstitial edema. CHF, you can have this one for congestive heart um, failure. Cavity containing an air fluid level. What's happening here? Pneumothorax. Pneumothorax, excellent. Upper lobe cavitation, consolidation. Ilar adenopathy. Upper lobe. TB. TB. Oh. Reactivation or not? Yes. Reactivation. Remember, react, um, TB, when it's reactivated, it prefers the upper lobe. High yield, guys. Please know the PFTs and know the difference between obstructive and restrictive. Okay? F obstructive, FEV1, FBC is decreased. However, RV, FRC, TLC are increase in obstructive. Okay, let's do some random restrictive lung diseases, right? Let's do number one. One, you have a nodule in upper lo lobes with eggshell. Classification. What is this? Eggshells. Silicosis. Silicosis, silicosis, excellent. So what are we going to do? What are we going to test the patient? Always associate silicosis with what? Another disease, another systemic disease. TB. TB test. What's the treatment for silicosis? Give ISO. Give isoniacid for nine months. If you're giving isoniacid, what vitamin do you need to supplement the patient? P6. Yeah. Excellent. So this is your pyridoxin. Isoniacid acts on what? On the TB um, bacteria. It acts on Cat G, right? Cat G. Cat G. Catalyst peroxidase G. Okay, good job. Next, reticulonodular process in lower lobes with pleural plaques. That gives it away. Pleural plaques. What is this? Asbestos. Asbestosis. However, what's the most common cancer? Bronchogenic carcinoma. Bronchogenic carcinoma, right? So mesothelioma is not the correct answer. The most common cancer is bronchogenic carcinoma for asbestosis. Next, patchy lower lobe infiltrates. You have a thermophilic actinomyces. Like, oh, this is interesting. You have a lower lobe infiltrate. However, you have a thermophilic actinomyces. Is this aspergillus? Oh, go ahead. What is yes, aspergillosis? But I'm thinking about what restrictive lung disease? Hypersensitivity, pneumonitis. Catholic. This is your farmer's lung. Okay, this is your farmer's lung. Patchy lower lobe infiltrates thermophilic actinomyces. Hypersensitivity. Pneumonitis, this is your farmer's lung. Next, you know this. Hyalur lymphadenopathy, increased ACE, erythema nodosum. Sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis, okay. Hypercalcemia due to what? Why do we have hypercalcemia in sarcoidosis? What's One alpha hydroxylase. What's the physiology? The pathophys. Why do we have hypercalcemia? You have an increase in what? Macrophages, right? So you have a secondary to increase um, macrophages. So important referral. In someone who has um, sarcoidosis, you refer them to what? Because this is the most common, most common complication in 25% of patients. Would it be an eye doctor? Excellent, good job. Ophthalmology, why? 
because you can get uveitis from yes. it. Remember from, from last week, right? 25% they have uveitis conjunctivitis in 25% of patients. How are we going to diagnose and treat? Diagnose with what? Remember, res for restrictive lung disease, what did they tell you last week? How do we PFT. diagnose restrictive lung diseases? PFT. Careful. Definitively. Definitive. Biopsy. Biopsy. Excellent. What's the treatment? Is it steroids? Or cycloids. Excellent. Steroids. Good job, um, guys. All right. Next one. Wait, Nick, um, yeah. what was the reason for the hypercalcemia? Like, I know it's involved in, like, the calcium metabolism, but, like, what? I mean, I find it secondary to increase in macrophages making a vitamin D in sarcoid. Just check that for me, please. Okay. okay. I, I thought that's the one. Yeah. Is it due to, or is it due to PTH? Because if you're if you're saying it is due to one alpha hydroxylase in, in the kidneys, well, you have kidney dysfunction in um sarcoid, right? On um, first date, for me. And first date it says due to one alpha hydroxylase mediated vitamin oh, D so, activation in macrophages. So in macrophages then, because I thought it's secondary. Yeah, it's secondary to macrophages making production of vitamin D. That's what I thought. But please check it for me. All right. Okay, we talk about adenocarcinoma. So just, you know, this one, most common cancer in non-smokers, adenocarcinoma, location, peripheral cancer. If you have kidney stones, constipation, malay, low PTH, a central lung mass, squamous cell. If you have shoulder pain, ptosis, constricted pupil and facial edema, this is your small cell carcinoma. Patient with ptosis, Better after one minute of upward gaze. Don't forget Lambert Eaton from small cell carcinoma. Old smoker presenting with low sodium, moist mucous membranes, no JVD, SIADH. Chest x-ray showing peripheral cavitation and CT showing distant metastasis, your large cell carcinoma. Okay, now let's go to the meat of today's session. <clears throat> Nephrology. Okay, let's begin. Oh, you need to know electrolyte abnormalities. So if there's low sodium in the blood, what happens? You have a gain of um, water. So you check osmolarity, then check the volume status. Hypervolemic hyponatremia, think about CHF, nephrotic syndrome or cirrhosis. Hypovolemic hyponatremia, think about the patient is receiving diuretics. Your loop diuretics are thiazide, or there is the patient is vomiting. Uvolemic Hyponatremia, uvolemic, there's no change in the volume. The, <clears throat> um, think SIADH, so check your chest x-ray of a smoker, Addison's disease, or hypothyroidism. How are we going to correct hyponatremia? Normal saline, if hypovolemic, or 3% sal saline only if seizures, or sodium less than 120. High yield, don't correct hyponatremia faster than 12 to 24 mill equivalents per day, or what's going to happen? Central pontine myelinolysis. Excellent. So you have central pontine myelinolysis. If you have increase in sodium hypernatremia, you are losing water. So you replace water with D5W or other hypotonic fluid. Don't correct faster than 12 to 24, or what will happen? Cerebral edema will happen. Next, let's do some other electrolyte abnormalities. Numbness, Schwostek sign. What is Schwostek sign? If you tap where? On the cheek. On the face. On the cheek. What nerve are you stimulating if you tap the cheek? Seven. What nerve? Cranial nerve what? A bugal nerve. Oh. Go ahead. Is it the bugal nerve, which is the branch of the... One. Careful. Careful. Two. Three. I don't know. Muscle. Muscle, right? Nervous controlling. Why, why are you twitching? Your 
Seven, shete, cranial nerve seven, your facial nerve, right? You're tapping this one and you're eliciting facial nerve. Remember, facial nerve is what to the face. It's, it's not um, sensory, right? It's motor to the face. Excellent. So it, it controls, that. that's why you have twitching. What's Trousseau sign? What's Trousseau sign? Guys, um, this is Oski. What's Trousseau? When you, when you do blood pressure and um, I'm not sure. When you do like... a blood pressure and you have a carpal pedal spasm of the hand. You, it spasms, okay? We call this one carpal pedal spasm. So you inflate. You inflate the blood pressure cuff, and then you see carpal pedal spasm. Okay, so what am I describing here? Numbness, Schwostek, or Trousseau, positive, and a prolonged QT interval. What is this? What am I describing? What electrolyte abnormality am I describing to you? Is this hypocalcemia? Hypocalcemia, so low calcium. Excellent. Next, bones. There's some kidney stones. There's some psychiatric issues. Shortened QT interval. This would be hypercalcemia. Hypercalcemia. Excellent. What if you have um, paralysis, you have an ileus, ST depression, and a U wave? What is this? Depressed T waves. Hypokalemia. Excellent. Excellent. There you go. That's a keyword, right? Hypokalemia. So treat with? Calcium. Ah, sorry. Potassium. Make sure the patient can pee. Okay. Make sure that they can pee. Um, for step two, maximum 40 milliequivalents per hour. That's the maximum that you can give patient. Next, peaked T waves. There you go. Prolonged QR, PR and QRS and sine waves. Hyperkalemia. Hyperkalemia. Bonus points. Treat with what? Treat with what first? Always in diuretics. Careful, careful. Adenosine. Careful, careful. There's a high potassium in the blood, uh, right? What is the most common if you have high potassium in the blood? What happens to the heart? Arrhythmia. Okay. Arrhythmia. So. I yield, you treat with calcium gluconate always to prevent arrhythmias. That's high yield. Always calcium gluconate. Then if that doesn't work, what's next? You know this one. Can't you give insulin, which will make... Yes, excellent. Uh, yeah. Yes, but first it's always calcium gluconate to prevent arrhythmias. If that doesn't work, your second line is insulin, right? Why? That's the question. Why? What's the mechanism of action of insulin? What happens to potassium concentration? It drives the, con it drives the potassium concentration from outside of the blood into the cell, thereby reducing the potassium um, level. You can also give chiaxalate, although research says it has um, low, what do you call this one? It's not rare use rare. It's now rarely used in the hospital in managing hyperkalemia. Your um, kayaxalate. Uh, last resort, then. If all of this, if you give calcium gluconate, still high K. Insulin, still high K. Kayaxalate, still high K. You give um, beta agonist, albuterol, or you give sodium bicarb, it's still high K. What's the last resort? that you can do to your patient. That's hyperkalemic. Last Would you check, check the magnesium levels? Hyperkalemia. That's hypokalemia, okay? Well, could you give some sort of like a loop diuretic or something at that point? Last resort. Last resort. Last resort. All of that is done. You, you've given everything. The last resort is dialysis. Don't forget, that's your last resort, okay? Remember, you give drugs first. All of these interventions first, calcium, insulin, kayaxalate, albuterol. If the question says, after all of that has failed, what's the next best step? The correct answer is dialysis. You dialyze the patient after all of the drugs 
is not working or it's refractory to hyperkalemia. Okay? Oh, guys, you need to love acid base disorders. <clears throat> right? Okay, check pH. If less than 7.4, acidotic, of course. If more than 7.4, it's alkalotic. Now, check the bicarb and PCO2. Okay, let's look at one. If bicarb is high and PCO2 is high, PCO2 is more than 40. What are we thinking here? And bicarb is high. <clears throat> what is this? What kind of acid base disorder is this? Metabolic alkalosis. Metabolic alkalosis. So you always check the urine chloride, right? If the chloride is more than 20 and there's some hi hypertension involved, think about um, Kohn's syndrome, hyperaldosteronism. If the patient is normotensive, the blood pressure is normal, think about um, RTAs, your Bartos or Gittelman's syndrome. Okay? If, C, if your chloride level is less than 20, the, um, the metabolic alkalosis is due to vomiting or your suction, nasogastric suctioning, or antacid use or a diuretic use. Next, PCO2 is low and bicarb is low. PCO2 is low, so the patient is hyperventilating, right? As a metabolic acidosis. Uh, what is this again? Is it metabolic acidosis? Careful. PCO2 is low and bicarb is low. Metabolic alkalosis. Oh, sorry, respiratory alkalosis. Respiratory. Excellent. Respiratory alkalosis due to what? Hyperventilation. Think about um, anxiety. Think about increased intracranial pressure. How am I going to check intracranial pressure in a physical exam? Look for papillodema. Ophthalmoscope. Check for papil um, edema. Excellent. Fever or due to pain and salicylic acid um, poisoning. If bicarb is low and PCO2 is low, we're thinking about an, an, an iron gap. So an iron gap is always associated with what acid-base disorder? Metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis. Do you need to know the anion gap? Yes. These are three points on your step and on your exam. Sodium minus the sum of chloride plus bicarb. Normally it's 8 to 12. If there is um, more than 12, think about anion gap acidosis. Your mud piles. Could you tell me what are your mud piles? What's the cost of this anion gap acidosis? You have methanol. Poisoning, what else? DKA, diabetes ketoacidosis, what else? Lead toxicity, what else? Uremia. So like uremia. uremia, good. So just check, go to you, go to um, first aid and check the mud files. Also, non iron gap acidosis. If it's normal, think about diarrhea, diuretics, and your renal tubular um, acidosis, your Gittelmans, your Barters. Okay? If PCO2 is high and bicarb is high due to hypoventilation, what are we thinking here? Respiratory acidosis. So think about um, hypoventilation from what? what? What pathology? Think about either opiate overdose, give Narcan, or there is a brainstem injury, or there is a problem in the heart, okay? Those are your acid-base disorders. Again, this one, please, renal tubular acidosis, know them well. Easy points, right? Type 1, type 1 is in the distal convoluted um, tubule. What's the cost? Think about um, lithium, right? Lithium. What disorder are, can we give lithium? Bipolar. Bipolar disorder. Aside from RTA, lithium can also cause what? What kind of SIADH? Central nephrogenic. or nephrogenic? Nephro nephrogenic. Oh, sorry. What kind of diabetes insipidus? Central or nephrogenic? Nephrogenic. Um, 
Ampho, ampho B, what's the mechanism of action of amphotericin B? It like pores in the ergosteral wall of fungus. Yes. So it pokes holes in your um, fungal wall, right? Some causes also analgesics. Um, also, another cause is SLE. Um, marker for SLE, specific marker. Is, is ANA specific for SLE, yes or no? No. What's the specific marker for SLE? Anti-DNA. Anti-double-stranded DNA, and what else? Anti-Smith. Anti-Smith. Okay, that's specific for your um, systemic lupus um, erythematosus. What's the characteristic rash for SLE? What fire? So the malar rash or the um, butterfly cheek um, rash. Most common complications for SLE. So it's systemic, right? So you can have um, renal complications for your um, SLE. Know the markers, they are very um, high yield. How about drug-induced SLE? What's the marker? What's the marker? The biochemical marker for drug-induced SLE? Hello? DNA? Yeah. What are we thinking? Anti? Mito mitochondrial, right? For that one. Okay, Chagrin syndrome, what is this? Chagrin's syndrome. Chagrin's? Chagrin's? So you, you don't have... um. Tears, right? You have um, saliva, decreased saliva production. So anti SSA and anti SSB for your um, Shogun. Sickle cell, what is the mechanism of action of this of sickle cell disease? Why do we have sickle cell? There's a change, there's some um, amino acid substitution from glutamic acid to what? Valine. Valine, excellent, sickle cell. Um, and then you can have um, hepatitis as a cause. Presentation, hypokalemia for type 1 in your distal convoluted tube. Treatment, oral bicarb. Type 2 is proximal. So you have Fanconi, myeloma, amyloid, all of those. Hypokalemia also. However, for this one, the bicarb won't help. So you need a mild diuretic. And for type 4, you're due to hyperreninism or hypoaldosteronism, and is caused by um, diabetes. And um, what's the presentation? Hyperkalemia. This is the only one. Type 4 is hyperkalemia. What's the treatment? Fludrocortisone. Um, so think about type 1, distal, the effect of your loop diuretics. Think about that one for the presentation, right? Um, for type two, for, for proximal um, replete potassium, think about the effect of your thiazides for type two. Type four, think about hyperaldosteronism, okay, or hyperrenin, increase in renin. So the renal tubular acidosis, cause of non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. Acute renal um, failure, you have a rise in creatinine. So what are you going to do? BON and creatinine ratio, pre-renal, post-renal, and all of those stuff. So pre-renal, for example, there's something wrong with the blood volume. If you have a low blood volume, think about pre-renal um, injury. Intrinsic inj uh, renal injury, think about there's something wrong with the glomerulus or there's something wrong with the tubero interstitial of your um, kidneys. 
And then post. Post we now think about obstruction. There's something wrong. There's something obstructing your ureter or obstructing your renal calluses. OK, that's how you differentiate pre renal. Intra renal and then post renal. All right, check urine sodium. If fena is less than one, it's pre renal. If it's um, more than one, it can be intrinsic or post renal. However, the, the FENA, the FENA, if it's less than 1%, it is pre renal. Also, you can check the urea. If the urea is less than 35%, it is pre renal. Okay? Treatment if it's pre renal, anything keeping the kidney from being perfused, right? So, treat with fluids due to shock, um, check uh, treatment for CHF. Um, Glomerulonephritis, cirrhosis, renal artery, stenosis, right? Okay, let's do some intrinsic causes. High yield, muddy brown casts in a patient with ampho, AG, cisplatin, or prolonged ischemia. So the patient was receiving amphotericin, cisplatin, or prolonged ischemia. Muddy brown cast, what is this? Acute tubule. ATN. ATN, what's the treatment? First line treatment. Just give fluids. D5, right? Normal saline. Avoid nephrotoxic and dialysis. If if it got if it gets worse, you last resort, dialysis. Okay. If it gets worse, right? Next, there's a protein. There's a blood and eosinophils, eosinophilia, high yield, in the urine plus fever and a rash. Kutuk, trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazol, Bactrim, one to two weeks ago. Uh, yeah. Acute interstitial nephritis. What's the first line of treatment? To stop taking the drug that caused it. And stop the offending agent next one there is no way after after you remove the back trim there is no improvement what's the next step in management of this patient you give your favorite steroids right your um, phospholipase a2 inhibitors remember okay next an army recruit or crush victim with CPK of 50 plus blood on dipstick, but no RBCs. That's that's the clue here. There's a blood, positive blood on dipstick, but no RBCs. A crush victim. No papillary necrosis. With CK creatinine kinase of 50,000. There's a blood on dipstick, but there are no red blood cells. Ah. Is it rhabdomyolysis? Excellent. That's that's it. Rhabdomyolysis. The key word here is there's a positive blood on dipstick. In the vignette, they're going to say that, however, there are no RBCs. They're going to give you the urinalysis, and it says RBCs zero. High power field. So think there's blood, but there's no RBCs. Think rhabdo. Associate that one with rhabdo myolysis. Question. Initial step in management of this patient. What's the first test that you need to do? You've done your analysis. Positive blood. Yep, but no RBCs. What's the next then? Check the rhabdomyolysis, right? That's your diet. The kidney function then? Care much more important than the kidneys. We're always worried about this. A crush victim, uh -huh. what happens to the cell? The cell lysis. What's the intracellular electrolyte in the cell? Oh, so then you want to check the heart because Excellent. for arrhythmia. Yes, check for arrhythmia. Why? Remember. When the cell is crushing, it releases what? What's the major intracellular electrolyte? Calcium. Calcium. Potassium, right? Okay. So first, you need to check the potassium via what? EKG then, right? EKG, remember crush victim. 
So there's like hyperkalemia. And remember, hyperkalemia, think about the heart, the heart. Why? Arrhythmias. Arrhythmias. It can provoke arrhythmias. So the first test is check the heart via what? EKG. Now, another question. What's the treatment then? Treatment for rhabdomyolysis. Think about from term one. We talked about this. About the urine. What are, what are we going to do with the urine? Alkalize or acidify it. Acidify or alkalinize. Careful. Alkalinized. Alkalinized. Excellent. Right? Treatment with bicarb. High yield, you give bicarb to alkalinize the urine to prevent what? The precip precipitation. Okay? Good. Next. Uh, envelope shaped crystals on urinalysis. Envelope shaped crystals. Struvite stone. Struvite stone. Careful, careful, guys. Careful. Calcium oxalate stones. Careful, careful, guys. <laughs> Citrate. Citrate, No, 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 no. It's an intoxication, it's a poisoning. Oh. Metabolic acidosis, an ion gap. Antifreeze. Antifreeze, ethylene glycol. Right? So this is your ethylene glycol intoxication, an ion gap, metabolic acidosis, one of the mud piles. Okay? Envelope shaped crystals. What's the treatment? Bicarb. Sodium bicarb. Right? Last resort is dialysis okay what was the treatment for rhabdomyolysis so Amman, the treatment is with bicarb we need to alkalinize the urine to prevent precipitation okay last one there's a bump in creatinine 48 to 72 hours status post cardiac catheterization or ct scan what's happening Why do you have an increase in creatinine? Is it like a contrast reaction? Excellent. So this is contrast nephropathy. Question, how are we going to prevent this one? Simple, hydration. So you give the patient what? IV fluids, basically, B5W, right? Or you give bicarb. All right. OK, guys, know this one, please indications for your dialysis if the patient is acidotic if the patient has electrolyte imbalances specifically hyperkalemia right if k is more than 6.5 the value of k is 3.5 to 4.5 that's a normal range or intoxication if they have antifreeze poisoning or lithium lithium if it's if lithium levels like more than five so you need to give dialysis or overload. You have um, the patient has CHF or a pulmonary um, edema. Even though you give loop diuretics, it still doesn't improve. Last resort is your emergent dialysis. Or the patient is uremic, like pericarditis. There's altered mental status. For uremia, you give emergent dialysis. However, do not give dialysis for high creatinine or less urine output alone. Okay, so these are your indications for emergent dialysis. A E I O U. Know them well. Next, CKD, another high yield point. What's the number one cause? DM. Next is hypertension. What's the number one cause of death in CKD? What's the number one cause of death in CKD? It is cardiovascular disease. So target LDL of less than 100. How are we going to do that? How are we going to um, lower LDL? What are we going to prescribe? A statin? A statin. Specifically, what statin? 
Your favorite. Verstatin. After Verstatin, the high potency ones. Remember, um, me, um, Simvastatin is a medium one, right? So always go for the higher guns. You know, after Verstatin, high potency. So what if I have CKD? Complications, right? Hypertension, fluid retention. Think about CHF. Loss of erythropoietin. So you have a normochromic, normocytic anemia. You can have increase in K, increase in phosphate, decrease in calcium. So you can have secondary hyperparathyroidism. If we have increase in phosphate, it leads to precipitation of calcium into the tissue. So what? Then you can have renal osteodystrophy and calciphylaxis. You can have skin necrosis. And also uremia, confusion, pericarditis, itchiness, increased bleeding, secondary to platelet dysfunction. That's for your CKD. Okay, let's do another exercise. So, doctors, your patient is peeing blood, right? Hematuria. What's the best first step? Your patient is peeing blood. What's the best first step? Urine dipstick test? Urinalysis. Urinalysis is the best first step. You, you do um, dipstick. If your analysis is not there, pick your urine um, dipstick. Okay, but if your analysis is in the choices, you pick your analysis. Painless hematuria, peeing blood, but painless hematuria. It can be what? Renal cell carcinoma. Yes, so you can have bladder or kidney cancer until proven other ones. What if you have patient is peeing blood, terminal hematuria plus a tiny clot? A terminal hematuria and tiny clots. Think about mesna. Think about mesna. Is that for Vinblastin? Never mind, that's wrong. Cystitis. Hemorrhagic cystitis. Excellent. What drug? Mesna is the treatment. What is this drug? Cyclophosphamide. Cyclophosphamide. Excellent. So terminal hematuria plus tiny clots. Bladder cancer, or it could be if the patient is taking medication, is hemorrhagic cystitis. Don't forget. Cyclophosphamide. You give mesna. Next. Dysmorphic RBCs or RBC casts. Mm. Patient is being blood, and then you see dysmorphic RBCs or RBC cast. Glomerular nephritis. Glomerular nephritis. Excellent. So there's something wrong in the glomerulus. What's the definition of nephritic syndrome? Nephritic. Inflammation. Inflammation. Give me just in one word. How Blood do in the urine. Nephrotic from nephritic. Pro limited proteinuria. Limited proteinuria, yes, but specifically in nephritic, you have hema. Oh yeah, hema. Hematuria, yeah. right? So nephritic syndrome, proteinuria, less than what? Less than what? How many grams? Of protein i less than two grams uh per 24 hours you have hematuria you have edema and azotemia but the differentiating factor is always hematuria for nephritic right okay one to two days after runny nose sore throat and cough the patient is peeing blood ah what is this your iga IgA nephropathy, right? This is what? Burgers, B-E-R, G-E-R-S, Burgers disease, right? Next, one to two weeks after sore throat or skin inspection or skin infection, the patient is peeing blood. Post-strep. Post-strep. What's the difference between IgA nephropathy and post-strep? The duration of symptoms. In IJ nephropathy, you have the patient is peeing blood after one to two days, right? For post-trep glomerular nephritis, one to two weeks, right? right? The patient is peeing blood. 
What's the characteristic in the urine for post strep glomerulonephritis? Cola, Coca Cola, right? Cola color urine, smoky cola urine. What's the best first step in post strep glomerulonephritis? Bur best first step. To treat the strep infection. I'm thinking about getting something in the blood for this one. The best first step in diagnosing it is actually post strep glomerulonephritis. How are we going to confirm that it is post strep glomerulonephritis? The strep titer? Eh, someone says it. ASO, anti-streptolysin O titer. Right, remember in Sketchy, the dog, <clears throat> right, for, for post-strep? Yes, the best first step is ASO, anti-streptolysin O titer. What can, we see? what can we see in uh, immunofluorescence? Oh, no, 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 not immunofluorescence. What am I thinking about? What can you see in electron microscopy? Sorry. The humps, lumps and lumps. Subendothelial humps or subepithelial humps? Subepithelial. Subepithelial. IgA, IgM, IgG, IgD. IgG, IgG humps. Guys, please know what what's in the em because that's a question they're going to describe you in the vignette it is post strep but the question is what can you see in electron microscopy so you need to know is it subendothelial is it subepithelial what kind of immunoglobulin is it so post strep glomerulonephritis smoky cola colored urine physical um you can see in the urine what's the best first step aso titer what can we see in electron microscopy Subepithelial IgG humps, right? Next, hematuria, peeing blood, and hemoptysis, coughing up blood. Good pastures. Good pastures syndrome, right? Antibodies to what collagen? Type four. Type four. And cuatro. Collagen um four. How about hematuria? plus deafness, no hemoptysis. Alports. Alport syndrome. X-link recessive, don't forget, mutation in what collagen? Cuatro, right? In collagen four. So what's the difference between good pasture and Alport syndrome in the vignette? You have hemoptysis in good pasture, no hemoptysis in Alport syndrome. Only in Alpert syndrome, you can have deafness, sensory neural hearing loss in Alpert syndrome. All right, let's do this one again. So it's a kid, status post viral upper respiratory infection with renal failure plus abdominal pain, arthralgia, and the clue, purpura. HUS. Careful. Is Careful. this IgA nephropathy? Because it's the Hanachin purpura. Mm, excellent. Good job. This is your HSP, your Hanach, how do I pronounce this one? Hanach Sean Lean purpura, IgA, right? What's the treatment? Supportive treatment, or you can give steroids, okay? Next one, Kidos. Status post hamburger and diarrhea with renal failure. You have microangiopathic hemolytic anemia and petechia. What is this? What am I describing to you, Doctor? HUS. HUS. Due to what bacteria? E. coli. E. coli. What? Give me the specific one, Raj. Zero or like O one five. Seven, H7, another organism that can cause this one. Shigella dysentery. Shigella, excellent. Good job. Do, do you give antibiotics? 
ah, do you give antibiotics in hemolytic uremic syndrome? Let me see. Yes or no? Yes or no? Doctors, let's think about this one. What's the mechanism of action of Shigella? How does it produce the symptoms? And E. coli 0157H7. They use what? The Shiga toxin. Um, a toxin. Frozen to like right? the endothelial. So yeah. they, they, excellent. So they release toxin. So do you give antibiotics? Yes, I guess you don't want to. You want to be careful because you don't want them to release too much more toxins. Excellent. Like if you're going to lyse the bacteria. Good job. So don't treat with antibiotics. Why? Because if you give antibiotics, the bacteria will gonna lyse. And so what if they're gonna lyse? They release more toxin for this. Okay. Good job, guys. Excellent. Next, cardiac patient status post teclodipine with renal failure. Microangiopathic um, hemolytic anemia, decreased platelets, fever, and altered mental status. PIC. Careful. TTP. TTP. Excellent. This is your TTP. What's the treatment? What's the treatment? Blood. There's something about the blood, plasmapheresis, right? Do you give platelets in TTP? Do you give platelets? Don't give um, platelets. How can you tell the difference between TTP and DIC? Um, in TTP and HUS, like the P prothrombin time and the PTT are normal, but in DIC it wouldn't be. Bravo, kudos to you. So you can tell from DIC because the PT and PTT are normal in HUS TTP. Excellent, guy. Okay, let's do the ANCA. ANCA, 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 which is high yield. Okay, you have C ANCA, kidney, lung, and sinus involvement. Don't tell me the Nazi's name, okay? What is That's this? That's the only one I know. <laughs> I always forget <laughs> okay, the other yeah, one. Okay. <laughs> Microsco microscopic polyangitis, okay? Or Wegner's granulomatosis. What's the most accurate test? Most accurate test. Remember my wording, the wording matters. Most Accurate test. Remember, C ANCA is not specific, right? P ANCA is not specific. What's the most accurate test for your microscopic polyangitis? Biopsy. Biopsy. What's the treatment? What's the treatment for Wegner's? Steroids. Steroids. Or you can give cyclophosphamide. For this one, okay? Treatment with steroids or cyclophosphamide. Next, P. Anca, renal failure, asthma, ding, 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 and eosinophilia. Ding, 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 ding. What is this? Church Strauss. Church Strauss, right? Or eosinophilic, something with polyangitis. That's that's a term that they're going to use on your exam and on the step. What's the best, um, the most accurate test? Same as your microscopic polyangitis, lung biopsy. What's the treatment for this? Cyclophosphamide, okay, steroids. Next, P. ANCA, no lung involvement, hep B. What am I describing to you, doctors? P. ANCA, no lung involvement, so lungs are fine. Hep B, hepatitis B, positive. Polymedosa. Excellent. Pan, polyarteritis nodosa, your medium vessel, vascular disease, right? Um, remember, in pan, they affect small and medium arteries of every organ except the lung. I don't know why. So what's the treatment? Same as the rest, cyclophosphamide, okay? 
All right, another point. Let's go to kidney stones, high yield. So we have flank pain, radiating to groin and hematuria. What's the best test? A, MRI. B, CT scan. C, urinalysis. Um, D, CBC. E, BMP. Kidney stones, what's the best test? Urinalysis. Uh, careful, best. Best. All right. Best. Yeah, just... test. How can we visualize? The stone, CT scan. You, you could do the um, CT scan, right? What's I the most also... common? So the best test is CT. Okay. Uh, what's the most common type? Of kidney stone? Calcium. The calcium. Calcium what? Oxalate. Oxalate. What's the treatment? Thiazides. Yeah. Hydrochlorothiazide. Excellent. Next. Kid with family history of stones. There's a kid. Someone said, what is this? Cysteine. So you can't absorb certain amino acids, right? Next, chronic indwelling Foley and alkaline P. What kind of um, stones you are predisposed? Ammonium magnesium. Good job. You're struvite, right? Remember, if magnesium or um, phosphate, think about struvite. Now, guys, give me the organisms that can predispose you to have struvite stones. What are the organisms? Give me four. Uh, Proteus. Let's see. Staff, and what's Staff. the last one? Okay. Mona Lisa. Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas. So Proteus, Staph, Pseudomonas, and Klebsiella. What if the patient has leukemia being treated with chemo? What kind of stones? Uric yes. acid. Uric acid, excellent. Question, treatment. Ruba car is the ruba carry case? Um, for this one, think about initial treat initial treatment, think hydration or alkalinize the urine. Okay? Uric acid give bicarbs and sodium bicarb. If status post bowel resection for volvulus. What is volvulus again? Volvulus is what? Your mid gut rotation, right? Rotation of the um, gut. So the patient has has kidney stones due to bowel resection for volvulus. Again, this is um, calcium oxalate stone. Why? Remember, calcium cannot um, calcium is not reabsorbed by the gut. The patient has bowel resection, okay? All right, treatment depends upon the size of the stone. If it's less than five, it will pass spontaneously. You just give hydration. If it's greater than two, endoscopic surgical removal. If it's stone is five to two, what's the treatment? Lithotripsy, okay? Less than five, hydrate. More than two, open, or we prefer endoscopic surgical removal. If it's five, mm to two centimeters, you do lithotripsy or extra corporeal shock wave therapy. All right. Last one before we go to hematology. So your patient is peeing protein. So we have proteinuria. Think about nephrotic diseases. What's the best first Step. This is tricky. This is tricky. What are we thinking, doctors? Biopsy. Nephrotic syndrome, guys. Careful. Would you do labs to test like your? Go ahead. Excellent. The best first test is actually you repeat the test in two weeks. Then you quantify with um, 24 hour urine. That's the best first step. Okay, 
Definition of nephrotic syndrome. Tell me how many grams of protein per 24 hours? 3.5. What happens to albumin? High or low? Low serum albumin. Low serum albumin. Hypoalbuminemia. Do we have edema? Yes. Yes, because you have low albumin, right? Do we have hyperlipidemia? Yes. Yes. So what can we see in the urine? You if see you have fatty cast. Exactly. You can see me a fatty or waxy cast, right? Nephrotic syndrome. Okay. Minimal change in um, kiddos. Minimal change disease, right? So what can we see? What is this? Minimal change. There's a effacement of what? Or if you look at electron yeah. microscopy, what, ha what, what, what happens? The protocyte food processes are effaced. Good job. Effacement of the um, food processes. What's the treatment for minimal change? None. <clears throat> you can give you can give actually steroids for um for minimal change in kiddos. What's the what's the minimal change in adults? Or in kids, we call it minimal change. In adults, it is. Ah, uh, no. Careful. Careful. Minimal change in adults. Membranous nephropathy. Membranous. So you have a thick cap, you have a sub epithelial spikes. Okay, that's membranous. Associated with heroin use and HIV. This is your. FSGS. FSGS, your focal segmental. What can we see in elect EM? Subepithelial, subendothelial, mesangial deposits. You need to know this, guys. This is high yield. Mesangial deposits. IgA, IgM, IgG, IgD, IgA. What kind of deposits? Wait, I thought in FSGS you don't have immune complexes, so you don't have any deposits of those. Hmm. Did someone check that for me? I thought you have mesangial IgM deposits or for this one. Or heroin use and HIV. You have IgM deposits for yeah. focal. But that one, it also says uh, effacement for focal segmental. Okay, but I want you to but I want you to think for FSGS mesangial deposit in the mesangium, right? You have a mesangial IgM deposits. Do you give steroids for FSGS? No, no. no. Why? Limited response. They don't respond to roids. Okay. Next, associated with chronic hepatitis and low complement levels. Chronic hepatitis and low complement. Is this membranous nephropathy? Um, membrano, membrano, tram track, tram track. Membrano proliferative. Excellent. So chronic hepatitis, low complement levels, think membrano proliferative. What can we see in the EM? Tram track. Basement membrane. What kind of deposits? Dense deposits. <clears throat> Dense deposits. You can have sub endothelial deposits for this. All right. Uh, does hepatitis also give membranous nephropathy as well? I'm not. Hep B? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it, it does. It, it does give you um, deposits. We're good? Okay. What if a nephrotic patient suddenly develops flank pain? So a nephrotic patient suddenly develops flank pain. Is that renal papillary necrosis? Careful. 
think about it this way. Nephrotic patient, low, al low albumin, hyperlipidemia. So prone to what? Cholesterol stones. Exactly. And what happens? Atheroma will gonna form. What happens to that? It will gonna thrombose, right? Thrombosis. Think about renal vein thrombosis for this one. Secondary to what? You're peeing out antithrombin 3, protein C, and S. What are we going to do? CT scan or ultrasound, stat, right? So other random causes for um, your patient peeing um, protein, think about um, Benz-Jones protein and multiple myeloma or UTI, or the patient has um, CHF. The patient is peeing protein. Okay, let's go. Let's do him, him onk. Okay, a patient walks in with microcytic anemia. So you have MCV of 70, decrease in iron, decrease reticulocytes, decrease ferritin, increase the IBC, and increase RDW. Iron deficiency? Iron deficiency. Next, number two, MCV of 70. So guys, this is high yield. Right, so make sure you know what happens to the levels. Okay, MCB of 70, decrease of um, iron, decrease TIBC, decrease reticulocytes, um, normal of ferritin. Is this chronic disease? Chronic. chronic, chronic Remember your microcytic anemia? Okay, let's move back a little, okay? Microcytic anemia, what are the causes of your microcytic anemia? Five causes. T? Thalassemia. Thalassemia, what else? Anemia of chronic disease, what else? Iron deficiency, Iron dis what else? Uh, Lead poisoning, and last one. Sideroblastic. Sideroblastic anemia, okay? Now, I am describing to you guys what happens to the levels. What happens to the iron? What happens to TIBC? What happens to reticulocytes? What happens to ferritin? Okay. Next, um, three, MCV of 60, but there's only a decrease in RDW. MCV of 60. And there is a decrease in RDW. So we have a decrease in RDW. What can cause a decrease in RDW? red cell um, distribution, right? What kind of anemia? Chronic disease, right? This is um, anemia of your um, chronic disease. Next, MCV of 70, increase in iron, increase in ferritin, decrease in TIBC. Consider a blast <laughs> Wait, Nick, what was two if three was chronic disease? So, so number two, MCV of 70, decrease in iron, decrease in um, TIBC, decrease in reticulocytes, and decrease in normal um, ferritin. I think this is, so one is iron deficiency, right? Three is, um, what did I say three is? Uh, anemia of chronic disease and what's number four what's four uh sideroblastic sideroblastic right so i think two is um let me see decrease in iron decrease in tibc decrease in iron and decrease in tibc can it be also acd for this because you have a decrease also in reticulocytes, right? I, I think someone said that, but I thought you said it was wrong. Yeah. 
Okay, let's let's um, do it this way. Iron deficiency. Okay, what happens to iron level? Increase or decrease? Decrease. Decrease. Okay, what happens to ferritin? Increase or decrease? Decrease. Decrease. What happens to um, TIBC? Increase In or decrease? Increase. Increase. Right. TIBC. What happens to the reticulocyte count? Did you talk about this one? So what is a reticulocyte count, basically? Would it increase since you're increasing your R? Well, no, the reticulocyte doesn't oh, careful. change. The width of it changes. Careful. Reticulocytes, right? It is a fraction of your all, the fraction of your red blood cells. So typically here, since you are, you are deficient in your iron, it correlates with what? Your erythropoietic, no, erythropoietic activity. Right? So if you have low in iron, what happens to the reticulous, reticulocyte count? It's decrease. Right? What happens to RDW? Increase or decrease? Increase. Increase. Okay. So, so that you're not be so that we're not confused at all. Iron deficiency anemia, decrease in iron, decrease in ferritin, increase in transferrin. Decrease in reticulocyte count, increase in RDW. Okay, just memorize that one. Next, anemia of chronic disease. What happens to iron? Decrease in iron. What happens to um, TIBC? Decreases. Decreases. What happens to reticulocyte count? Decreases um, also. What happens to RDW? It's um, normal for this. What happens to ferritin? Increases. Increases for anemia of chronic disease. Next, thalassemia. Well, thalassemia, it varies, guys, okay? It can have normal iron to increase, normal or increase ferritin. Someone is calling. Oh, someone is calling me. Yes, I know it's eleven thirty. Um, normal to increase in TABC, increase reticulocyte count. So basically, for thalassemia, it varies the levels from normal to increase. So let's not let's not talk about that one. Another high yield, sideroblastic. Let's do sideroblastic. What happens to iron in sideroblastic anemia? Increase. What happens to fer uh, ferritin? Increase. What happens to um, TIBC? Decrease. What happens to reticulocyte count? Since you have, uh, what happens to reticulocyte count? The erythropoietic activity, erythropoietic activity decrease. What happens to um, red cell distribution? Increase. Okay, I think that's much more um, high yield for you guys. No iron deficiency, anemia of chronic disease, thalassemia, it varies. So I think they won't give you like the, the levels and sideroblastic um, anemia. Pregnancy or the use of oral contraceptive pills can also um, produce um, microcytic anemia. However, they won't give you like um, the levels, what happens to ferritin, what happens to um, TIBC. Only no iron deficiency, anemia of chronic disease, sideroblastic um, anemia. All right, please correlate that with um, with the thing here. I know it's it's confusing, right? Okay, next, uh, mac macrocytic anemia. We know that MVC is more than 100. Number three is macrocytic anemia, basically. Differentiated between one and two. One has um, increased homocysteine and normal methylmalonic acid. So this is what deficiency? B12. Folate deficiency. Careful, careful, guys. Normal methylmalonic acid. Oh, folate I'm deficiency. <laughs> yes, B9, your folate deficiency. And number two is? Increase homocysteine and increase methylmalonic acid. This is your B12 deficiency. 
12 deficiency. Okay, let's wrap it up. It's 1141. Uh, normal MCV, increase LDH, increase indirect bilirubin, and decrease in haptoglobin. So those are your lab values, right? The vignette says sickle cell kid with a sudden drop in hematocrit. So they, they give you the lab values. It's up there. And then the scenario, a sickle cell kid with a sudden drop in hematocrit. What's happening in this kid? Aplastic crisis. Exactly. So this is your sickle cell crisis. From what are the causes of um, sickle cell crisis? Hypoxia, dehydration, or acidosis. Next, cyanosis of fingers, ears, nose, and recent mycoplasma infection. GM. Okay, think about Coombs test. Think about Coombs test. This is your cold agglutinins, right? So destruction is occurring in the liver. This is IgM mediated, right? Cold agglutinins. If there is a sudden onset after penicillin, cephalosporin, sulfa, rifampin, or cancer, Normal MCV, increase LDH, increase indirect bilirubin, decrease haptoglobin. Then you have a sudden onset after medications or cancer. Think about warm agglutinins. So this is where's the destruction? Destruction in the spleen IgG mediated for warm agglutinins. Treatment with steroids and then splenectomy. Now you have the same lab values. However, you have splenomegaly bilirubin, gallstones, and increase in MCHC. What is this? Sickle cell? Oh, sorry. Practice. So normal MCV. Normal MCV. We have the same, we have the yeah. same lab values on top. However, the patient has spenomegaly and increase in um, yeah, bilirubin and gallstones. Hereditary spherocytosis. Good job. Yes, this is hereditary spherocytosis. AD loss. What, what is lost here? They love this one. Ankyrin or spectrin, right? They love that. Ankyrin or spectrin. Loss of spectrin or ankyrin. What's the treatment? Splenectomy. Now, same lab values again. However, dark urine in the morning. Bud Carey syndrome. Your or um, portal vein thrombosis. Bud Carey. You have dark urine in the morning. What is this? Paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Defect in what? What gene is affected? Uh, GDAS. <laughs> Pig A. <laughs> right. Big A. So this is due to what? Lysis of your RBCs by complement. So what if I have PNH? You have increased risk for a plastic anemia, high yield. Same lab values, right? However, you have a sudden onset after primiquine, right? Your anti-malarial, sulfa drugs, and fava beans. G6PD. G6PD deficiency. What can we see in the cell? Heinz bodies, right? And then your macrophages will try to eat that. You can see bite cells, right? So avoid oxidant stress, okay? <clears throat> All right, now, thrombocytopenia. A patient walks in with thrombocytopenia. In your mind, think about your diagnosis, thrombocytopenias, right? 30-year-old, female, recurrent epistaxis, heavy menses, and petechia. However, there is only a decrease in platelet. Everything is fine except for the platelets. What is this, guys? Careful, careful. There's, there's nothing wrong with PT and PTT. And bleeding time. There's nothing wrong with that. Only the platelets. TTP, I'm thrombocytic. Careful. ITP. 
ITP is immune, right? Um, thrombocytopenic purpura. This is treatment with, what's the treatment for this, for ITP? Steroids? Yep, prednisone. And then, if it doesn't work, you do a stenectomy, right? I can also give, um, what is that drug? Rituximab. I can also give rituximab here, okay? Next, 20-year-old female, recurrent epistaxis, heavy menses, petechia, normal platelets, however, increased bleeding time, and PTT. What is this? Is this Von Willebrand's? Excellent. So this is Von Willebrand's disease. What's the treatment? Desmopressin for bleeding or pre-op. We need to replace what factor? High yield. ADM. Careful factor, guys. The bleed, the bleeding cascade. Factor eight. Ocho. Factor eight. Why? Why eight? It's linked. Sorry. Why eight? Because it contains your von Willebrand factor, basically, the factor eight, ocho, it contains von Willebrand factor if bleeding continues. Next, thrombocytopenia still, 20-year-old male, recurrent bruising, hematuria, and hematosis, increased PTT that is corrected with mixing studies. Male, 20-year-old male, Recurrent bruising, hematuria, and hemarthrosis, bleeding in the joints. Increase in PTT that corrected with mixing studies. Hemophilia. Excellent. Think about the British royal family, right? The descendants of Queen Victoria. They have hemophilia. Treatment, that's more pressing. Otherwise, we replace the factors. Next. Oh, 50-year-old, just like me, male, metatarian who just finished a two weeks of clindamycin, has hemarthrosis and oozing at venipuncture sites. Vitamin K deficiency? Vitamin K deficiency. What factors are decreased in your coagulation cascade? Two, seven, nine, and 10. Dos, siete, nueve. Yes. What other protein is deficient? CNS. ENS. What's the normal function of protein C and protein S? Anti Anticoagulants, right? Um, what drug it, it mimics vitamin K deficiency? Warfarin. Warfarin. How are we going to treat someone who has vitamin K deficiency? Give them vitamin K. Give them vitamin K <laughs> shot or um, fresh frozen. Fresh frozen. Acutely, okay? Next. 50 year old male, beer atarian <laughs> with severe cirrhosis. <laughs> A beer atarian. Oh man. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Right? Last Wednesday. Okay, beer atarian with severe cirrhosis. What are we thinking? Would you have a decrease in like all the factors? Yep, basically liver disease, right? Liver disease. What first factor is depleted though? Remember the short half-life. Which factor has the shortest half-life? Seven. Seven. Shete, right? Factor shete, seven. So PT increases first, right? Remember seven is where? Intrinsic or extrinsic? Extrinsic. Excellent. Excellent. Right? Two factors that are not depleted then. Factor eight. Ocho. Excellent. And what? Think Glanzmann thrombostenia. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Bernard Solier. I'm sorry. It's Bernard Solier. There's a von Willebrand factor, right? So the, the two factors that are not depleted are factor eight, ocho, and your von Willebrand factor. Why are they not depleted? 
because they are made by endothelial cells. The endothelium itself, it produces your factor VIII and your von Willebrand factor. Good. Now, another one. A patient walks in with thrombocytopenia and look at the smear. Look at the smear on the right side. If PT and PPT are increased, fibrinogen decrease, D dimer, ding, 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 and fibrin split products are increased. What is this? TIC. DIC. What's the cost? Sepsis, rhabdo, adenocarcinoma, heat stroke, pancreatitis, snake bites. Um, uh, what, what else for um, this one? Treatment of um, APML, right? Don't forget that when, when you treat APML. So what's the treatment for DIC? Fresh frozen plasma, platelet transfusion, and correct underlying diagnosis. If PT and PTT are normal, what are we thinking? E. coli. Your HUS or your TTP? TTP. What's the cost? E. coli 0157H7. Um, Diclodipine. Also, what else? Um, Anti-malarial anti uh, quinine. quinine. Um, Think about antibiotics, uh, cyclosporin. Um, think about HIV, right? Think about cancer. What's the treatment for HUSTTP? Plasma pheresis, right? No platelets, please. All right, next. Seven days, same scenario, right? We have um, same scenario. Patient walks in with thrombocytopenia and the smear. Seven days post-op, patient develops an arterial clot. Her platelets are found to be 50% less than pre-op. Hit? Hit. H-I-T. What's the mechanism? Heparin-induced thrombo. Go ahead. IgG to heparin bound to what? Platelet factor four. Okay, don't forget that. There's an IgG to heparin bound to platelet factor four. What's the treatment? Stop heparin. And you can start your direct thrombin inhibitors, right? For example, dabigatran, bivalirudin, or your lipirudin. Okay, next, same scenario. What to look for in someone with unprovoked um, thrombus? If there's an unprovoked thrombus, cancer. Think about your lupus anticoagulant. You have increase in PTT. You have false positive VDRL. Don't forget that. Protein CNS deficiency. What's high yield here? Skin necrosis. Warfarin skin necrosis, right? Factor 5 laden. Um, this is an inheritable procoagulant state, right? Antithrombin 3 deficiency. Heparin won't work. There are there will be clots on heparin if you give heparin. Oral contraceptives, um, no go for women more than 35 years old if they smoke. And nephrotic um, syndrome, why the UP out antithrombin three, protein CNS preferentially. So you are increasing the patient's risk for renal vein thrombosis. All right, let's do some oncology, some extra slides on your um, oncology. So you're, you're still good, guys? Or do you want to take a break? You're still good? It's up to you if you need a break. OK, let's just finish this one, and then we're going to take a break um, later for the questions. OK, scenario, fatigue, petechia, infection, bone pain, if there are more than 20% blast. What is this? ALL. Uh, acute leukemia. We don't know. So we, we need to do a um, biopsy, right? If there's SCALA or TDT, this is your ALL. Most common cancer in kids. Our rods, myeloperoxidase, esterase. AML. 
AML, more common in adults. Think about, uh, don't forget APML has our rods and it, and it causes um, DIC upon treatment. Partridge I'm sorry, what's the first one? The if more than 20% blast, what was that? This is a definition of acute leukemia on oh, biopsy. Okay. Okay. Kala or TDT, this is ALL, most common cancer in kids. The next one, our rods, AML. Tartrate resistant acid phosphatase. Hairy cell? Hairy cell leukemia. You can see enlarged spleen, but there's no adenopathy. But remember, hairy cells have numerous cytoplasmic projection, projections on smear. High yield treatment. Let's go back to term four. What's the treatment for hairy cell? Is it cladribine? Excellent, cladribine. A week, of course, five to seven day single course of quadrupin. What's the treatment of ALL? Danarubicin, remember, um, vincristine, prednisone, of course. Bone marrow transplant if they have a remission after giving the drugs. Treatment of AML? Danarubicin plus um, ERA C. Right, if APML you give, ATRA. Don't forget that, high yield, all trans retinoic acid. Let's look at the imaging here, okay? On the left side, a patient presents with fatigue, night sweats, fever, common, we call this one B symptoms, constitutional B symptoms. Splenomegaly, elevated WBC with low lap, Right, and basophilia. CML? CML, what's the translocation? 922, Philadelphia. 922, translocation. This is your tyrosine kinase, right? So what's the treatment for CML? Tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Imatinib. Sample, give me the name. Imatinib. Imatinib, or in the hospital, Gleevec. This is your Gleevec. It inhibits tyrosine kinase. Second line, if it doesn't work, imatinib doesn't work. Bone marrow, bone marrow transplant, okay? On the right side, a symptomatic elevation in WBC is found on routine exam, 80% lymphocytes. What is this? Commonly seen in the elderly. CLL. CLL, there you go. <laughs> there's nothing else, right? CLL. If there's lymphadenopathy, stage zero, no treatment, right? If there is a splenomegaly, you give fludrobin for this one. If there's anemia and thrombocytopenia, steroids, your corticosteroids for phospholipase A2 inhibitors, okay? So the left side is CML, the right side is C. L, L. Okay, next. Enlarge, painless, rubbery lymph nodes. Think, one word. Lymphoma. lymphoma. Excellent, lymphoma. So you have drenching, night sweats, fevers, 10% weight loss. These are your B symptoms. Good prognosis or bad prognosis in lymphoma? Is it good or poor? Bad. Bad, right? Along with what? What are the poor prognosis in lymphoma, aside from this one, aside from B symptom? More than 40 years of age, increase in um, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, ASR, which are your pro-inflammatory markers. What else? Increase in LDH, lactate dehydrogenase. And then you have a large mediastinal um, lymph nodes, right? What's the best initial test? For a lymphoma? Biopsy. Biopsy. What kind of biopsy? Excisional lymph node biopsy. What's the next best step after biopsy? Cytology. Think about um, chest or abdominal CT scan, right? Or an MRI, imaging studies, right? If you're still unsure, you can do a laparotomy, right? Don't forget bone marrow 
biopsy for non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. That's the, you can also do that. Next, look at here, weed Sternberg cells, orderly centripetal spread plus weed Sternberg cells. What is this? Hodgkin lymphoma. Hodgkin's lymphoma. So the type with best prognosis in Hodgkin's Lymphocytic rich? Lymphocytic rich or lymphocyte predominant. More likely to involve extranodal sites. Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's? More likely to involve extranodal sites. Like, like the Non-Hodgkin? NHL, excellent. National Hockey League, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Staging, how do we stage? So by by nodes that's involved, right? One one node group, two two groups, three both side of diaphragm, and then four a bone marrow or liver involvement. Do we treat them? Yes. If they're um, like stage one and two, you get radiation therapy. If um three and four, you give um chemo therapy. Right. Last one, hematologic hematologic. Um, randoms, bone pain, punch out lesions on x-ray, hypercalcemia. What is this? What am I doing? Bone bone myeloma. MM, best first test. Best first test. Electrophoresis? Electrophoresis. <laughs> what can we see? What spike? M spike. What, what is M spike? IgA, IgG, IgM. IgG. IgG, monoclonal spike. What's the confirmatory test? Bone marrow aspiration? Bone marrow biopsy. So showing what? More than 10% of plasma cells. What's the treatment if the patient is young? Bone marrow transplant. If the patient is old, you can give prednisone or melphalan. Uh, for hypercalcemia, you can do hydration and um, Lasix. Then you can give biphosphonates for hypercalcemia. Next, dizziness, headache, hearing and vision problems, and monoclonal IgM M spike. Waldenstrom. Waldenstrom, macroglobulinemia. No symptoms, immunoglobulin spike found on routine exam. No symptoms. However, there's an immunoglobulin spike. The MGUS? MGUS, okay. Next, older patient with generalized pruritus and flushing after hot bath. Hematocrit of 60%. Vera. PV, polycythemia vera. First step, check EPO levels, right? Make sure it's not secondary. What are the secondary causes of polycythemia? There's carboxy, um, again, please. Come again? Hypoxia? Yeah, carboxyhemoglobin, right? What's the treatment for polycythemia? Vera. Transfusions? Yep, so you do phlebotomy, schedule phlebotomy. What else? What can prevent thrombosis? What can you give? That you can also give in sickle cell? Uh, dextro. Hydroxyurea. Hydroxyurea. Why? It can prevent? thrombosis. Remember, your hematocrit is a 60%. Or you have an increase in RBC. So treatment is scheduled phlebotomy. You can also give hydroxyurea, which can prevent thrombosis. All right, guys, let's have like a five-minute break. We're going to come back, okay? Is this